but let's start. Let's get let's get into this video. Let's get into this video now. Let us get into this video. So, the first thing I want to talk about is the Super Bowl. Did you guys watch the Super Bowl? Was it fun? I really enjoyed Usher's performance, actually. So basically, the whole idea of like getting Paramount Plus. I guess I bought Paramount Plus after Usher's performance, so I missed it, and so I had to wait for it to come on YouTube. That's why I'm a little bit late, a little bit late in my live stream. But I don't know. Like it was. I think it was good. I think it was good. I think it was phenomenal. I saw some of the comments, people reacting to the Super Bowl. People were not feeling it. Some people were talking about how, you know, it's 2024. Why is Usher performing? You know, you get a lot of mixed reactions. Um, and it's actually kind of crazy because I almost feel as though because of the new age of social media and because of capitalism, we don't have any new celebrities. And hear me out when I say that. We have no new celebrities in the sense that studios want to invest in what already exists. They, it's easier to put your money into something that you know is a proven model that has an established brand and audience than investing in something new. And it's just as though like traditional media used to, you know, tr uh, trash on new media and all the new stars are, on, are in new media. And so now they're only putting money in old uh, media talent. And that's why you have all these people performing all the superstars today because they are depicted as superstars, not because they get the most attention. Uh, but the, the superstars today, the people that traditional media elevate tend to be people who are famous 11 plus years ago. I think the, the threshold is like, but none of these new guys are, are performing at the Super Bowls. Like, why isn't like someone like Dua Lipa, Justin Bieber, why aren't they performing at the Super Bowl? Why do we have these people that were hot 20 years ago performing at the Super Bowl? It's just really interesting. And it's something to think about how traditional media backs their own um, and only support their own. Um, and I'm not dogging on Usher. I'm a big fan of Usher. I loved his Super Bowl performance. It was killing it. But I can only imagine, because when I'm looking at the comments about the Super Bowl, I can only imagine what somebody that's like 20 or, t you know, 19 thinks about Usher's performance. Like, it's almost like <laughs> when I was young, watching music from the 80s, at this, like, it doesn't, like, you wouldn't want to watch that. It's like, oh, that's your parents' music, you know? So I understand when I was looking at the comments and they were like, why on earth is Usher performing? These must be like Gen Z, maybe even Gen Alpha. And it's like, yo, why are they playing this old music? So that's one thing that I was thinking about. Another thing I was thinking about is that <laughs> Chris Brown really effed up. And I, this is not me trying to take any of usher's uh accolades or discredit him usher, usher is a phenomenal act he's just a phenomenal superstar but when i think about what chris brown was supposed to be when i think about how big chris brown was supposed to be and i juxtapose that against what he is today it's really unfortunate to me that he would have been sitting in that spot he would have been somebody that the Super Bowl would have said, let's put let's put Chris Brown there. And it's almost a lesson in life that if you mess up, there's somebody to replace you. Even if we have to get the person that was there before you, because Usher was the OG. He paved the way for people like Chris Brown. We'll get the OG, you know, before we hire you because you don't know how to act. There are certain rooms that Chris Brown will never be allowed into. And he always wants to blame it on him and Rihanna, which is a lie because everybody forgave him after Rihanna. After the Rihanna incident, he was forgiven. He went back to the Grammys and he's won Grammys. He's been celebrated. It's the consistent behavior of abuse. And actually, I would even say that Chris Brown helped 
spearhead Usher's career. She he helped no not spearhead that's the wrong word revive because <laughs> Usher was obviously big before Chris Brown even existed. Um, but Chris Brown helped revive Usher's career last year. A f- Usher had a- Usher capitalized on a few viral moments that really, you know, advertised his Vegas um, residency. You know, the viral challenge of, ah, I'm not going to sing for you, but you know what I'm saying. That viral challenge, um, the viral challenge on TikTok, what is Usher doing at seven o'clock? And he even incorporated it into his performance. Um, but most importantly, I think the real thing that made Usher get so much attention last year is when Chris Brown beat him up. Um, Chris Brown like punched him allegedly. I think that helped with Usher's like reviving because there's something about in filmmaking, in writing, screenwriting, we have this thing called, there are things that you have to put in a character that your audience are going to root for that character. They're going to love that character, right? And some of the things are stuff like, um, they have to be confident. They have to be likable. There are all these things. But one key component in that is the unfair injury, the victimhood. People rush towards victimhood and sympathy. Taylor Swift has yielded this as a superpower, which propelled her into superstardom. It was her being a victim when, what's his name? The guy she was dating, Nick Jonas, one of the Jonas Brothers. When he broke up with her on a text message, it was her being a victim when Kanye West. Taylor Swift is the perpetual victim, and she uses that to her advantage to yield public sympathy. And so I say all that to say... Usher benefited from the victimhood of Chris Brown beating him up last year. And when he beat him up last year, everybody was sympathizing with Usher. Everybody was looking for Usher. Is he okay? Is he okay? So that's what I got to say about that. Super Bowl performance, great. Uh, You know, we had Usher. He had her. I loved when her came on. That was the best part for me. He had her, he had Alicia Keys, he had, we heard he was going to have Lil Jon, Ludacris, he had Will I Am, which is unexpected, and the dancing, his dance moves are phenomenal, and the fact that he's able to do that on, like, grass, he's able to do a moonwalk on grass is crazy to me. Um, So that was, that was a great thing, and Beyonce broke the internet with her ad, Let me see if I can find the ad. She broke the internet. She had an ad, a Verizon ad, which was really cute. But in addition to that, she dropped some music. And I'm like, is Beyonce just like not trying to um, let everybody, like let Usher shine or let anybody else shine? Like she always has to steal the show. Beyonce. Let me see. Beyonce. Verizon. And what do you guys think about... Okay, here's a Beyonce Verizon ad. Let me see. Wait, what? Okay. Let me play this. And then she dropped new music. Personally, I am not a fan of the new music, but let's check out the Verizon ad for Beyonce. the internet again. Did you post this? No. Well, not on purpose. Well, it's coming in hot. Ah, it's Verizon 5G. The network is crazy powerful. I bet you can't break that. <laughs> I bet I can. Wait, Ooh. what? <laughs> Beyonce breaks the internet, but can she break Verizon? Broken? Mm, no. Time for a surprise drop. That's cute. Did I break it? You broke me. <laughs> oh, no. Say my name. Say I'd say. Aww. But it still didn't work, so. Introducing Beyonce. I. What the? Seriously? How about Barbe? Hmm. I'm running for Beyonce of the United States. Can you hear me now? Bonus are cute. cute. You're working! How about the first woman to launch the first rocket for the first performance, performance in space? space. 
That would be so Rising dope. Didn't break. Damn. You ain't gonna break me. Still works. Okay, they ready. Drop the new music. That's cute. And then she dropped new music. And that's how she broke the internet. That's very cute. Um, the new music. <laughs> the new music of Beyonce's. I was not feeling it. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what it is that we're watching here um, with Beyonce. I don't know what this new music is. I don't know. Well, like, I was so confused. Let's look at her. her. So she dropped this ad that on her Instagram, she had the new music. And then on her website, when you go to her website, let's find it. Yeah. On her website, she has these two new singles. And I don't know what she means by act two. Is it like Renaissance act two? And it's going to drop. Like This is somebody that's so prolific. <laughs> I don't understand. She just dropped an album. She dropped an album in 2022. And then she did a tour in 2023. And now she's back again with new music. Girl, prolificity. Oh, I guess like she just dropped these because I was on her website. She looks like her mom. Damn. I was on her website a few moments ago. And it, this wasn't there. Yeah. So this is new. Okay, Beyonce. Yeah, so she has new music. And um, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. It's just, it's, it's very country. Is this like Beyonce's country album? I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. But okay, let's get into the meat of this conversation. We've talked about Beyonce. We've talked about Usher. Great Super Bowl performance. But leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, all the above. You're watching Brand Video Pro. I am your host, Kenemo. Make sure you check out. I'm trying to. Boom. Hit me up for a consultation. Hit me up for a consultation. I'll say it again. Hit me up for a consultation, a one-on-one. -on -one, and I have, and if, you know, my prices are pretty good, but if it's too expensive for you, what we do at, you know, at AutoCreate is we do consulting. Um, and I think for this channel, what m might be most interesting to you is content marketing consulting. But also there is business consulting, all the stuff we talked about in this video. If you have a business, if you have a business and you want to figure out how can you monetize, how, what are the next steps you need to take? How should you build out the infrastructure? Hit up this Harvard Business School student and I will give you the lowdown. There's not just that. There's also, there's not just that. There's also the content marketing, right? There's content marketing. And with content marketing, we're just going to talk about, you know, I give you a consultation. I'll help you build out your social media and make sure you boom. And if, if my prices are too expensive for you, join my membership. Join Content Mastery Academy here on YouTube. Click the join button. And on there, you know, I have these one-on-ones, one-on-one consultations with people. And you can learn from that. So those are way more affordable. It's only like $24 if you get content mastery. But if you want me to give you a customized plan to help you with your pain points to build out your business, well, I would suggest you book a one-on-one -on -one with me on auto create auto slash doc create auto slash create dot com. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. A peace.